they've issued 1048, which basically requires uh, a lot of in-depth uh, documentation in the work papers related to questionable tax positions and what the exposure might be and so forth to put them together tax provisions. And the IRS looked at that and they said, oh, this is wonderful. So then they would start to ask for those work papers. And um, so then well, they said, well, how can we get around this? So they said, oh, I know, I know. We'll just require them to include the information with their income tax returns, because they have to put it together anyway. So uh, there is a new form, UTP. I've given you a copy with your materials. And so if you have financial statement clients, specifically audit, audit clients, and, uh, and they're subject to 1048, uh, they're going to have to complete one of these forms. Um, now, the form will eventually be required to be submitted to corporations with both uncertain tax positions and assets equal to or exceeding $10 million when the corporation or a related party issues audited financial statements. And the, but what they're doing is they're, they're phasing it in. And so most of us probably here are out. Uh, for 2010, corporations with assets of 100 million or more are required to file. 2012, it's gonna be 50 million, and then the 10 million threshold will apply starting in 2014. Okay. Um, so again, my feeling, and you know, it's been discussed all along that not unique in this regard. Uh, I think this will chill open communication between companies and their auditors. Already have problems as it is, but you know, why would they want to give them all this information? Just work with your attorneys and uh, say uh, as little as you can. Uh, anyway, uh, evidently there's no protection from self-incrimination here. You know, you just have to disclose it because it's required for your financial statement. Uh, so, so since you had to show it to the auditors,
Mail that he'll have to send. Oh, he's 10 ID in. Oh, I'm at the post office just rubbing his hand. Well, anyway, um, you know, I just don't think the benefit's going to justify the cost. Uh, and there's the other thing. Okay, so remember I told this thing about 1099. So if you go in and you buy some stuff from Office Depot or Office Max, whatever, and you pay some of it with a credit card and some of it you pay with a check, maybe you just bring some cash or whatever then you're going to have to segregate them which one is which, right? Crazy stuff. All right. I don't think that that's going to stay, but um, they discussed it in Congress, and they hit a wall when they said, okay, we're, we want to repeal this. We really want to repeal this. How are we going to generate the revenue to make up for what the government would want to do for this? Well, <laughs> they haven't come up with an answer. All right, now, I, uh, this is a little more recent, so I don't know, uh, may not have received so much publicity, but the Small Business Jobs Act passed recently. It also had some 1099 requirements. You're all familiar with those, right? So, what does it say? It says, rental real estate. In the past, we have not had to issue 1099s for clients. Uh, who had rental real estate and uh, and were making uh, payments for things like you know tax return preparation fees and legal fees and uh, property management fees. Okay, um, now if you make payments of more than six hundred dollars for rental property and ninety nine hundred, and that is effective for this year. That means when we are issuing ten ninety nine. Clients next January, next February, uh, we're going to have to be doing that. And you've all told your clients about this, right? Yes. Good. So we'll leave you here. Okay. Next item I'm going to talk about is the e filing. Okay. So um, in the past, e filing has been sort of optional to some degree. California has, you know, it's it's requirements and then you could opt out. Okay, well the IRS basically has said, um, well not the IRS, it's like Congress again, this is part of the revenue raising and so forth. And what are they doing? They're trying to reduce the cost of processing income tax returns. So now all income tax returns are supposed to be e-filed for any tax return preparer who prepares 100 or more federal individual or trust income tax returns. 2012 forward, tax return preparers 